Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Southern Utah. The seasons are changing, I'll tell you what. The last few days, it has been chilly out in the morning. It's like 50, but I love it. It is my favorite time. I'm excited. I'm ready for some snow. I'm not ready for the mud, but I'm ready for some cooler weather, some jackets, some Carhartts, some mud boots. Just like a different different scenery, you know? All the leaves are changing. It's so beautiful up here right now. This is like, this is like why I wanted to move out here. Love it so much. Anyway, we are, we're just doing some odds and ends today. We have a propane line that we got that we need to make sure I have all the fittings for. And we gotta fill up some gas. We gotta get some new batteries for this guy. Check out these batteries, guys. These batteries have seen better days. So if you didn't know, we just got this trailer maybe uh, like two months ago and it's awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything works great. But I think the batteries are not up to par. Like I've tried to charge them multiple times with the generator. And then as soon as I get done running the generator for like four hours, which should be more than enough to charge these batteries, I click on the battery button and it's like dead and none of the lights turn on or anything. So I don't know what is going on. But so I'm going to take those batteries off today, take them into town. We're going to get some new ones. Next Wednesday, guys, we are headed to the dunes and I am excited. I'm getting ready to go also we have a propane line that we're gonna hook up our whole house generator we got that the other day we need to possibly get some fittings so i'm just gonna make sure we have everything and if not i'm gonna get that in town today's a day of doing little chores and errands and all that stuff just to get everything ready to go yeah so let's go Look at these batteries, they're all like corroded. That especially is bad. But these are some Duracell. I don't know, they don't look too old. They just look dirty, but they just don't hold a charge anymore. Anyway, I got those out. I'm gonna go take them in to Napa to get a core replacement fee, you know, and then get some new ones. All the fittings, all the connections on those wires are like corroded. So I'm just gonna redo all of them while I got it apart and then start okay, fresh. We're gonna run into town here in a few minutes, get all this stuff done and we'll bring you guys with us. So let's rock. This little cutie pie, somebody's ready for Halloween. <laughs> Show them your little orange and black outfit. We are headed into town right now. We've got a bunch of stuff to do. We need to go grocery shopping. We need to propane, get batteries, propane. Gas. Yeah, a bunch of things. So we'll take you guys along on our ride into town. Batteries have been bought. We're gonna have some brand new batteries for the travel trailer. Yeah. Right, grocery shopping is done. Bubba has been warned, do not step on the eggs. Guys, I cannot wait until our chickens start laying eggs. It is like $27 to get five dozen of the eggs. So I'm really excited when we can get some organic, fresh laid eggs from our hens here, hopefully soon. They're a little over four months old, so I'm hoping, praying, come on. It would be like winning the lottery to us. I feel like it's like a pool of bags. <laughs> a pool of bags? Mom, I feel like it's a pool of bags. A pool of bags? Yeah, it's a <laughs> Yeah. We're back up to the property now. We ran like 20 different errands, put all this stuff away, put new batteries on the trailer. We got uh, chainsaw chains. We're gonna sharpen our chainsaw chains and see you guys up there. I'm over here at the trailer right now, sitting on the chair, and all these fittings, the little connections for um, that went on the old batteries, are all corroded with like battery acid and everything. So I'm gonna swap all of them out. And I, there's actually some wires on here that I don't even know what some of this is. Like there's so many little, I don't even know. It's don't there. Know. I'm just gonna plug it back in the way it was. I mean, this is like 15 year old trailer, and there's random things that were hooked up and probably maybe disconnected now. They were on there now, and I'm it worked, so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. But I'm gonna replace all these connections, and then we should have some fresh batteries for our dune trip in a week. That's not even the worst one. Look at this one. Look at that. Oh. Play 
go choke up on a little bit. So I'm pushing up. All right, the batteries are changed. Let's see if we have any juice. With the other batteries, it would just flicker at empty and one third. And now it's full. Is it dune time yet? Let's go. golden hour it is sunset is that what that's called yeah it's the golden hour okay anyway we did a lot of running around today completed a lot of errands and got a lot of things done that we were trying to get done the last few days we've the... been trying to only go into town once a week we've yeah. been trying to minimalize we got lists of things and all uh -huh. that stuff to get is uh to limit our time in town anyway but we put the batteries in everything works good i think we're gonna call it a night so we'll see you guys in the morning
How's it going guys? So today we are gonna install our own weather Doppler system thingy. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, we live like an hour outside of town. The weather report from that town is like not accurate where we are. We're like 3000 elevation higher than that as well. So we ended up just going on Amazon and buying our own little weather vane with all the stuff that shows rain and wind and all that humidity, everything. Now we're just gonna mount this thing it's sitting on a pole right now, an eight foot fence post pole. I think we're gonna mount it up on this bar and have it go straight up just above the cover and that way it'll be able to give us a good reading. So right now we're just gonna put that up. All right, so to put this up there, I have this little L bracket. We used it for building our shop and this is just left over. So I'm gonna use this as like a shelf to put the end of this fence post up, up there. And then I'm gonna use a clamp to hold it tight. And then I'm gonna use these, this like strapping, metal strapping, wrap it around a few times in a few different spots and just put some self-tapping screws in. And that should be good, I hope, we'll see. <laughs> All right, thank you. I can twist it a little bit, but that that end of it needs to be point, uh, pointing north, which is like right there. So I think we're good. Here's like the control panel for everything. It says the time, latitude, longitude. So it is 66 degrees outside, the, a low of 66 and a high of 72.9. And this is the winds. So we got some Northeast winds at four, four miles an hour. This is inside the trailer. It's actually hotter inside. It's 73 degrees inside the trailer. Shows when the sun comes up, when the sun comes down, barometric pressure, rain. It'll tell how much rain it catches, like the amount, but it's connected to Wi-Fi. You just have to plug this into an outlet and then everything else is wireless. Now that we have that that we'll be able to predict a little bit more of our actual weather rather than like an hour away, 3000 elevation down. But hopefully this will help us out. Anyway, we actually got that Trent and Ali were telling us they have it, they have the exact same one. And I was, I see it on their videos all the time. And I'm just, I've been talking to them about it for a little bit. And finally I bought it. On to the next thing. Hi chickies. Hi turkeys. You guys want some? Veggies, here you go. Oh, eat up, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know who's who. That is definitely a rooster right there. Look at the waddle on that guy. <laughs> All right, now that we have our own weather channel, onto something else. That box right there, we have a heated garden hose that has like a electrical line that's wrapped around it that's heated. It's gonna be running from our spigot that goes to our trailer. So the one that we have there now is just like a regular clean water RV garden hose. So I'm gonna swap that out. It has been getting cold at night, like low 30s, freezing is coming. So I think we're gonna swap this out real quick. Just kind of be proactive about it. And if it if it does freeze in, it should be heating it up to where it won't matter. We're going to attach this heated hose. So in order to do that, we gotta turn the water off and disconnect this hose. Let's do it. It's ah! <laughs> There's pressure. <sighs> we removed our other line. Now we're gonna put this heated line in. One thing that you have to remember when you're putting one of these in is there's a thermostat on there. And on this line, it's right here. And the thermostat will automatically turn on and off the heating element inside the hose based on the temperature. So you want this to be in the coldest area. So connect this 
on the outside. That's where we're gonna connect it. And then the other connection is gonna be on the inside because it's gonna be a lot warmer in there. So we want this heated uh, hose to turn on sooner than when it gets cold in there because it shouldn't, shouldn't get below, I think it's 40 degrees when it kicks on. It shouldn't get below 40 degrees in there. We're gonna put this one out here, run an extension cord over to the trailer to plug it in, plug that one into the trailer, and then we should be good to go. I bought a new, if you don't have an RV, and you're not familiar with it, but you have to get a pressure regulator because you don't want too much pressure going into your RV and blowing out the lines. So you have to get a pressure like regulator that's specifically meant for RVs. So I have that. So I'm gonna install this here first before I put it onto the spigot so that we don't have any problems with blowouts. What a day guys. So this heated hose is pipe thread. It's not hose thread. So nothing would thread on at all. So we had to take a trip in town. So a five minute job or not even that. How long does it take to take a hose off and put a new hose on like two minutes? I don't know. So this fitting we got and this one, it took us 45 minutes to get into town and 45 minutes to get back and 15 minutes in town. So five minute, less than five minute job turned into almost two hours. <sighs> anyway. So I guess one of the things about living off grid, I guess I probably could have learned, looked in the description of this hose. It probably said pipe thread, but I didn't. Anyway, now I'm ready to put this on. We can be done with this and move on. So many dirty jokes. Before we plug in the heating element, I'm gonna make sure there's no leaks. Everything's connected. We're gonna turn this on and At some point you might have to put like some insulation around this. I don't I don't know if this thing's frost free or not. I might wanna like insulate the crap out of that thing too, maybe one day. We'll find out here soon if anything freezes. Now that we have it all set up, my goal is to keep my son <laughs> from four wheel riding over it. This last summer we made a beam for our niece to practice her gymnastics on. And I think I'm gonna put that beam right across here to keep the kids from riding their bikes and four-wheelers over top of the heated water hose. You know those things in the offices that you put over extension cords or cords so people don't trip over them? <laughs> but yeah. in off-grid, this is for motorcycles and dirt bikes. So yes. It serves the same purpose. Yes. <laughs> well, we were able to get that a little weather Doppler thing up today and it took what, like four hours to put a hose on. I thought we were gonna be able to get more stuff accomplished today, but that is not the case. You only can do what you can do, right? So yeah, I think we're gonna eat some dinner, hang out, call it a night. So we'll see you guys in the morning.
morning guys so today we are gonna keep with the theme of winterizing some things yesterday we did the heated hose today we are gonna be doing rv skirting i've read multiple things that say keep the air from underneath and your trailer will stay extremely or a lot warmer than i looked up a bunch of places to get rv skirting they have a bunch of places that make them like easy snap and all these places but they are I mean, it's expensive it's like almost two grand for ours ours is a 44 foot trailer so you have what 90 feet plus the pop out so you're 110 120 feet maybe like i don't know so you're like 1400 bucks and shipping and you know so it gets expensive so i found a cheaper route so i bought some just heavy duty all-purpose tarps like they're 10 by 10 um, they're 10 mils thick which there's like 16 mil 20 mil i don't want it to fall after i tape it like it'll be too heavy they're 10 by 10 i'm gonna cut them in half so they're 5 by 10 and then just tape them on the side of the trailer and go from there. That's pretty simple. I did look at buying some of the old, like the used billboards, the, the, the tarp like style billboards. And it was a good option and they're not extremely high priced, but the shipping was the, the main thing that was expensive. So this was just easy. I think I spent less than a hundred bucks on this or maybe at right about a hundred dollars. And then I have some 3M extreme hold tape that I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna start opening these things up now. I'm gonna be cutting them in half. So they make, I have five of them. I think I have one or two more on the way. They just didn't come in this package, but I should be able to get 99% of the trailer done with these uh, five. Let's skirt this bad boy. Really quick, I just wanted to show you guys what my plan was and what I think I'm going to do now. I'm down here sitting at the edge of the trailer on the bottom. My initial plan was to tape it to the trailer framing right here. Then if I put the tarp right here and come down, like I have this big cavity right here that's just open to the elements. And I feel like that's just gonna kind of defeat the purpose of what I'm trying to do. I didn't want to put tape on this to like get leave residue and all that stuff. But I think that's my only option, honestly, just to make it as warm as possible in the trailer. And then I'm hoping that I have that 3M it's spray adhesive remover that if whenever I take this stuff off, I'll be able to just use that spray remover and it'll just take the stuff right off and hopefully it won't discolor this metal, this metal framing right here. I'm gonna cut these tarps and we're gonna start putting this on. All right guys, so my plan is, since these are 10 feet long by five feet, I'm gonna put a piece of wood and just kind of roll it. And then I have my stapler and I'm gonna staple it so it holds it tight to the ground or somewhat so it does, the wind doesn't move it around. I know like the, the actual RV skirting you can get is a little heavier and it has like little sleeves to put like rods and whatever in. And so I'm just gonna do it this way. It's super easy DIY. Also, hi kitty. Hi babies, you're on camera. Our trailer is a all weather trailer. As you can see, like all this is covered and there is a few heating vents that are just open inside under here that heat up this entire thing and all of our lines are as you can see oh, there's no plumbing lines or anything except for the drain line right there um, that's the only thing really these are that's the low point drain that you can drain on the water out of the tank if you want to just gonna put this on here staple it down make it kind of a little loose not so it's like super tight because obviously the ground is not 100 percent straight can do that on every single one of them and then i'll just hold it down tight and make it look good So this is a, it's a skirt that's gonna go around so the wind doesn't blow underneath so it'll keep the trailer warm. So if, air, if cold air gets underneath it, it'll make the inside of the trailer really cold or it'll make it colder than if you do this. This blocks all the wind. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm down here underneath the trailer. <laughs> Squished like a sandwich. I'm right here. Sit up. Let me
I should have that anyway. Oh, goodness. If oh, things could just go right every single time. Trailer, <laughs> no, I don't either. I hope that that goop stuff can take it off, but not take the pinstripe and everything off too. Can you push the two by six out a little bit towards me? Yep. Like in this corner, a little bit more. People say you don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hand dandy mice killer over there at least. I know they're hanging out down here, they like it. <laughs> they're playing. Kitty kitties! <laughs> <laughs> Do another one. Another Bring one. it back this way. Okay. Yeah, it's right here. Boba, bring it down towards. Got Yay. it. Do one more. Bring it over this way, like a little bit more. There you go. Hit it again. Oh, sorry. There it is. Yeah, and we're getting to the end. Here's to hoping we stay warm. Oh my goodness. You like your new home down there? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be warm. <laughs> yeah, me, the cats, and the spiders. Right. Ah, it's like a Halloween nightmare down here. So after I put this up, let me see. <laughs> how are you gonna get out of here? I'm gonna roll, get a back massage on the rocks all the way to the other oh, side. It's tight. <laughs> That's the last side that we need to enclose right there, but. Maybe I won't oh. have a burrito for dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah, you've already had one today after this roll, huh? That's funny. I can, there's like a, the bar is like right across your face. I can't even see your teeth. There you are. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get this shit done. Can you make it? <laughs> That's not an army crawl. There's the burrito. Watch out. Oh, you're going to hit it. There you go. I army crawl a little bit and then I burrito rolled. The last piece of tarp is being put up. I don't think we're gonna put any on the back though. I don't think it's necessary. We only have like four or five, maybe in some places. It's only a couple inches from the ground to the to the trailer. Our neighbor's dog is hanging out. We had a pup party this morning. There was like a couple of neighbor's dogs hanging out. I guess we're the cool. I guess we're the cool homestead because the pups all come and gather and play here.
the skirting is done. It looks awesome. And I, I'm super happy about it because it was like a tenth of a price of the an actual skirting kit that you could buy that was made for it. It looks great. I think we're going to stop working for the day. We are going to, we're going to have a little fun. Not everything on the homestead has to be about work. So we're going to take you guys along with us and see some awesome, beautiful scenery. Okay, we got his sweater so we can pack it up and go to Dixie. Who's ready to see the flowers? The Who's changing. ready to see the changing of the leaves? This guy. That guy? For sure. And Charlie. Perfect, perfect day. What is it? 65 degrees outside. Oh. I'm in. It's my favorite. Favorite time of the, of the year. Fall. And... full throttle or no throttle oh, so i would be that freezing is, my butt off that because that's not true i'm not all in the dunes i'm full throttle or no throttle in the dirt i am not i go like 25 30. yes you're lying <laughs> no you're lying no, you're lying. like a speed racer no i'm going 20 miles an hour right now go ahead debate it in the comment section and let's see oh, good. yeah we're going 25 miles an hour because we're a forerunner ah! <laughs> Full throttle, let's go guys. I'm not. So we got this new Everfun bag for when we go on our adventures. It's the, the Sparter edition, where we can hold a ton of drinks, snacks, and it keeps them cold for about 20 hours. If you guys are interested in getting a Sparter bag to go on your adventures, check the link in the description and just get one. Well, this place is amazing. The views are crazy. We're almost 10,000 elevation up here. Yes, it is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. If you've never yeah. visited Southern Utah, it is worth the experience. It is so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Everything in Southern Utah is beautiful. There's a place yeah. or a mountain or a valley or whatever that is going to be <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah. Well, I think we missed, we missed the changing of the leaves. They're all gone. Majority. We were out here like two weeks ago and they were 
like neon green and yellow and i think that was in one of our last videos if you guys saw it red we gotta, all we gotta come out a little bit sooner next time but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed us winterizing everything getting it ready for winter it's snow is coming we want to thank everfun for sponsoring today's video yes super cool backpack we love it i think we are gonna hang out here play with the kids a little bit before we head back and so enjoy the views yeah oh they're gorgeous <laughs> please uh <laughs> like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys on the next video see you in a few days Thank you.